All right, welcome back, my Math 2 people. We've got 5-2 properties of parallelograms. So we're going to continue with polygons in here, and we're going to get specifically into quadrilaterals pretty much from here to the end of the unit. So we're just going to look at four-sided shapes. So our question for today is, how can you prove that the opposite sides of parallelograms are congruent using triangle congruence theorem? So back from unit three where we did like side angle side 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 angle side angle all that other stuff so how can we use that stuff to prove that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are going to be congruent to each other all right so let's start with the definition of what a parallelogram is a parallelogram is a quadrilateral well that just means that it has four sides So it's a quadrilateral, it has four sides, where both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Oh, I forgot to write are parallel. Let's add that. And that's why it's called a parallelogram, because we have opposite sides that are parallel. So that means that AB would be parallel to CD over here, and it would mean that AD is also parallel to BC because the opposite sides are parallel to each other. So that's the definition of a parallelogram. So there's two things in that different definition. Number one, we know it has four sides. Second thing that we would know in this one is that AB, side AB, is parallel to side CD. And that AD, side AD, is parallel to side BC. So just by stating that this is a parallelogram, we would know those two things. Number one, it has, four, it has four sides. Number two, it has opposite sides that are parallel. Now, because the opposite sides are parallel, four other things become true. Right now, just the definition tells us these two things are true, that it has four sides and that the opposite sides are parallel. But using triangle congruence theorems, we can actually prove four more things are always true about parallelograms. So here's the four things that are going to be true about parallelograms. Thing number one, if this is a parallelogram, the opposite sides are going to be congruent to each other. So that tells me that this side here is congruent to this side here, meaning they're the same measurement. And this side here is going to be congruent to this side here. Well, up there it said, how can we prove that the opposite sides are congruent using triangle sum theorems? Well, here's how we would do it. We would make these into triangles. All right, so we've got triangles there. We know it's a parallelogram, so we can say that this is parallel to this, and this one's parallel to this one. How does that information prove that the opposite sides have to be congruent? Whereas here's how we would do it. Remember, parallel sides prove angles are, are congruent. So if we look at it, since the top line and the bottom line are parallel, this right here and this right here, those are alternate interior angles, so they must be congruent. Now, since our left side and our right side are parallel, we could say that these two angles are congruent by alternate interior angles. And then we have a shared side. So by angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, these two triangles would be congruent and therefore, we could prove this side is congruent to this side by CPCDC. And then we could use that this side is congruent to this side by CPCDC. So the reason why the opposite sides are congruent is because when we draw a diagonal, we get angle side angle congruence. And then the sides become congruent by CPCDC. That's the answer to your question up there. Rewind if you missed it, because that's the answer to your summary at the end. 
All right, the other thing that we learn is that opposite angles are congruent. So opposite angles means this angle here and this angle here would be the same exact measurement. This angle here and this angle over here would also be the same measurement. And the reason for that has to do with same side interior angles. So since these lines are parallel, so this line here is parallel with this one, these two angles, if this is the transversal, would be same side interior angles. What do we know about same side interior angles? Well, we know that they add up to 180 degrees. So let's just toss in a number here. If this number here were 70, this number here would have to be 110. I should put it up here. Okay, well, if that's 70 and 110, now if I look at this one being parallel to this one, these two angles are same side interior angles. And if this is 110, this one would have to be 70 because these two are same side interior angles. And now you see that these two angles are the same. And then over here, you'd say, okay, if this one was 70, then this one right here would have to be 110 because these are same side interior angles and they have to be supplementary. And now you see that this angle here and this angle here have to be the same. So the opposite angles have to be congruent to each other. Which leads us to our next one, and we've already shown it here. <clears throat> consecutive, consecutive means in a row. Consecutive angles are supplementary. So like I said before, if this one's 70, this one has to be 110, because consecutive angles, angles in a row, equal 180. And we just showed why using uh, same side interior angles. Over here, if this is 110, this is 70, because these are consecutive angles. If this is 70, this one has to be 110, because these are same side interior angles. So angles in a row, they have to be supplementary to each other. They have to add up to 180. All right, last one is that the diagonals bisect each other. Now I can see here a diagonal cuts all the way across from here to here. Now this diagonal is the longest diagonal. We can see that these points are the farthest apart and these points are a little bit closer together. So we do know that these diagonals are not the same length. So diagonal just goes from one opposite angle to the other opposite angle. Okay, those are our diagonals. But we can actually prove with triangle congruence theorems that what they're doing is cutting each other in half. So this length here from the intersection is going to be equal to this one. So this is basically be the midpoint of this segment, and this would be the midpoint of the other segment. So we would know that they cut each other in half. Now, these diagonals are not the same length, but they do cut each other in half. They bisect each other. All right, so that's all the information that we need to know about parallelograms. Six different pieces of information. They have four sides. The opposite sides are parallel. The opposite sides are congruent. The opposite angles are congruent. The consecutive angles in a row add up to 180. And the diagonals bisect each other. All those things are true about a parallelogram. So here we go. First one, looks like I left something off. First example. It looks like these two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. So number one, that tells me I have a parallelogram. How do I know? Because it has four sides and the opposite sides are parallel. That's the definition of parallelogram. Okay, now we're going to solve for M, X, and Y. So solving for M, one of the rules was the opposite sides are congruent. So this side must be congruent to this side. So I can write that M plus 3 has to equal 18 because opposite sides are congruent. 
So subtracting 3 from both sides, m would be 15. All right, let's look at x. A lot of things we could do with x. We could say that these two are consecutive angles and they add up to 180, but I don't yet know what y is, so that's not really helpful. But we do know that opposite angles, this angle here and this angle here, <coughs> opposite angles are congruent. So I can say that 2x is equal to 70 because opposite angles are congruent. So divide by 2 and I get x is equal to 35. Next, y and the 70 are consecutive angles. So I can say that y plus 70 equals 180 because consecutive angles are supplementary. So subtracting 70 from both sides, I get that y is 110. So I solve for m by using opposite sides are congruent. I solve for x by showing that opposite angles are congruent. And I solve for y to show that consecutive angles are congruent to each other. All right, I think we just have one more. Yep, one more. All right, example two, this is it. Okay, our given is that KN is 2. So from here to here, that's a length of 2. We know that the measurement of angle KJM is 110. So KJM, that's this whole angle here. That angle is 110. And I know that angle NMJ is 30. Where is NMJ? NMJ, that's just this small one right here. This is 30 degrees. All right, let's see what they want us to find. First thing that they want us to find is NM. NM right there. Well, I do know that these are diagonals, and diagonals bisect each other. So that means this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to that side. So if KN is 2, NM also has to be 2. What's the length of KM? So from K to M, that would be 2 plus 2. That one would be 4. Next one, angle KML. Let's see, where's that at? K. M, L. We want to find this angle right here. Well, that's going to take a little bit of work. We know that this is 110 right here. That means this whole angle right here, that whole angle right there has to be 70. Because consecutive angles, so this big angle and this big angle, have to add up to 180 degrees. So using the angle addition postulate, if this is 30 and the whole angle here is 70, then this small angle in here has to be 40. Because 30 plus 40 is 70 degrees. Last one, JML. JML, that angle. We already said that whole angle has to be 70 degrees. And there we go. All right, math hard. Good luck. Goodbye.